Hello and welcome. My name is Orun Parmaks and I'll be talking about packaging Rust applications for Arch Linux. So here's a little bit of introduction about me. I'm a free and open source software enthusiast, which means I like to create open source projects and contribute to others. I'm a Rust developer and I like to learn new stuff. You can find more information about me on my website orhun.dev. So Rust programming language. Rust is a multi-paradigm programming language focused on performance and safety, especially safe concurrency. Version 1.0 of Rust released in 2015 and since 2016 is the most loved programming language according to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. So why Rust? In this section I'll be covering some of the reasons why we should prefer Rust. So first one is performance. Rust is blazingly fast and memory efficient with no runtime or garbage collector. It's reliable because its type system and ownership model guarantee memory safety and thread safety and it enables you to eliminate many of the bugs at compile time. Rust is a general purpose language, it means that it's appropriate language for any type of programming, it's project oriented, it has an integrated build system and package manager called Cargo, and Cargo comes with great tools like Autoformatter and Lint Checker. then lastly it's well supported, it has a wide community and great documentation. So applications, we can do pretty much most of things using Rust, from command line tools to embedded programming. And it's well suited for low level Linux systems, user space programming. So you can write daemons, services, and command line tools uh, using Rust in Linux. And it, it's because that Rust provides a robust configuration. It will deal with namespaces and formats for us. It can generate manual pages for the application automatically. And it has a lot of logging libraries, and you can configure them with different targets and with different styles. Uh, and it's easy, easy to distribute a Rust application in Linux because everything compiles down to a single binary and there's no need for users to have a runtime or libraries installed. Everything is handled, with, handled by Cargo. And lastly, you can communicate with machine using Rust, which means that it provides many, it supports many of the output formats. And actually there is a quote from the Unix philosophy that is in the official Rust documentation. So because of these features, there's a meme on the internet called Rewrite It in Rust. So there, there is a packaging demo and I'd like to give a disclaimer before I start the demo. And more up to date information may be available uh, on the wiki pages. Here are the wiki pages that I'm using right now and latest standards can be found there and when in doubt ask for help in forums, mailing lists and IRC. So I'll start by installing Rust. I'll use the uh, Rust up package for installing the Rust tools. Then um, I'll use the stable toolchain for the demo and I'll, uh, I'll create a new project I'll name it conf, it will be a binary. Then I'll use the uh, git as vcs, so it will initialize a git repository inside the project directory. Then we can go in the directory and see our toml file is pretty much empty. It will just, it contains just the package, basic package information and dependencies uh, section is empty. Then we can see our main.rs file is just a simple hello world program and I'll go ahead and run it then i uh, commit the changes so I'll be using a create call device query for demonstrating a for creating an app actually for printing the mouse coordinates device query uses the, the x server for querying the mouse and mouse coordinates mouse details and uh, keyboard details etc and i'll use the device query for simply printing out the mouse coordinates in my little rust program so i'll go ahead and assume that it depends on libxcb which is actually a false assumption but i'll be checking the libxcb for now for proving a point afterwards, when we create the package, we'll uh, I'll show you how to detect some of the uh, things like false dependencies afterwards. 
So I'll go ahead and check if the libxcb is installed. It is installed and I will add the device query create to the dependencies list in the cargo toml. And I'll update the main.rs file uh, for printing out the mouse coordinates. It's actually a example from the device query create. It's, uh, it's from its documentation. Then I'll go ahead and run the uh, Rust program and it will print out the mouse coordinates. We can run it multiple times to see if it works. Then I'll use the FMT tool for formatting the code if it's now formatted. Then use Clippy for checking the lints for the for seeing if my code contains any of the common mistakes. Then lastly I'll check the code again which is not necessary but uh, I'll check it and I'll build a release binary from the little conf project. So re release binary is created in the target slash release directory. You can go ahead and run it if you want. So we will be installing this, bi this binary and other details in our Arslings patch package. So the other details are uh, the license and readme. I'll add a example license and readme to the project. License is MIT and readme does not contain anything fun. And we go ahead and commit the changes. Then we'll create a tag for versioning our application. Then we can use the git archive command for creating an archive from uh, one of the branches. So I'll use the master branch, which is the default branch and it will create an archive in our project directory. Then we can start writing our package. So I'll go ahead and create a package directory and I'll copy the archive into it because we're going to use the local files for, uh, for our package build. Package build is what we need uh, for Archlinks packages. So package build essentially contains package details like package name, description, and some of the, uh, and it contains some functions for installing that package or building that package on our Archlinux system. So I'll go ahead and create our package build here. So I'll I'll explain some of the fields. So first one, uh, first line is actually maintainer tag, with, which means that I'll, uh, I am the maintainer of this package. If we push this package to uh, AUR, it's important to add the maintainer and contributor uh, tags to the package build. Then we will have basic information like package name, package ver, uh, which is the version, and package rel is the release version, and description is, sh it should be simple because it should not self-reference the package itself. We should use the, use a simple description, architecture, and URL will be empty because we're not, we, have, we don't have any upstream URL that we are we need for this case, so it's empty. The so license is MIT. Uh, my package will depend on the libxcb package, but uh, as I said, it's not true. But it will build anyway, and I'm going to show you how to how we can detect the actual dependency uh, when we 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 proceed with the package so so make depends is cargo we will need cargo for building our rust application so source is the archive we just uh, created and sha512 sums it's it will be skip skip for now because uh, i'm i want to show you a really convenient way of uh, filling this array with the correct sums we can do it manually but i'll show another way and the functions are build, check, and package. Build will check the uh, code for compilation errors or anything, if anything like that uh, exists in the code. Then uh, the actually a target there is here is not uh, necessary, but I want I wanted to add this because I wanted to talk about it because most of the time it's missed. Uh, actually, the default directory for the Rust applications. Uh, the default build uh, directory is target, but we can actually change that with the environment variable. So uh, if uh, if that's changed, we we use the target there uh, with the cargo com with the cargo build command, 
for indicate for indicating that we want this project to be built in the target directory. So in this case, our target directories, uh, the default build directory is already the target, but uh, we can change that. So it's unnecessary, but it's there. So we go ahead and we go ahead and cargo build with release uh, flag and locked will will mean eventually the cargo locked lock file will be should be uh, up to date. Then check will run the tests, although we don't have any tests. Uh, it's just running the tests and the package function actually installs uh, and it means that it copies the necessary files to the correct locations. So we are copying the uh, re release binary inside the target release directory to user bin and we are installing readme to user share doc and license is important because normally if we are using a license like GPL3 or GPL2 we don't have to install the license because it's it's in the user share license uh, license is a common directory so if a license is in that directory we don't have to install because it's installed in the system as a, as a default license but MIT is not installed so we have to install the license to the user share licenses uh, manually here so we are go we are doing that and we can uh, go ahead and use mag package for building the package so see if it's going to build then we can see it's fine everything looks okay but we are missing the SHA 512 sums so I'm going to use a script from the pacman country package which is update package sums it uh, performs, uh, performs an in-place update of the checksums in a package build so I'm going to use the update package sums for updating the checksums in the package build. Then we can use a tool like NAMCAP for checking the common mistakes in package builds. It, it can give false positives sometimes, but it's overall a great tool. We can go ahead and say NAMCAP package build. Uh, it didn't print out anything important. Then we can go ahead and see check if our file locations are correct basically we can do that with the tree command we will just going to tree the package directory to see if anything is uh, not in place so we, we we see that it's everything's fine but more convenient way is using the tar dash tf uh, tar command with the tf arguments t means list and f means that we're going to give it a file so we are giving it the 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 uh, archive we just built, and it will print out the contents of the archive, so we can see what we what we did with the files. Everything looks in place. Cool. Then uh, we can create our SRS SRC uh, info if we want to push this package to AUR. Then uh, I'll go ahead and create another package here which will be a VCS package I'll use the latest state of the git repository for building a uh, building the conf pack conf application conf rust application so I'm going to create a new directory called VCS package I'm going to copy the package build we just created because we just need to update some of the uh, variables here like the package name it will be conf-git because we are using git as vcs then we can use the we can update the package description if you want then we can go ahead and add the conflicts and provide sections inside there we are using a bash parameter expansion for removing the git suffix so it will conflict with the conf package and provide the conf package then i'll use i'll update the source array which which will use the local git repository then uh, SHA 512 sums will be skipped because we don't need that then I'll update the I'll add the package word function for uh, the uh, package word is actually invoked when the package is building so it will be invoked for the for updating the package word variable itself 
So I'll go ahead and update that. Then the rest is the same except we are removing the git suffix from the package name. So we can go ahead and use namcap for the package build we just cr uh, built, uh, we just created. And this time it will show something because I missed something on purpose which is the git make dependency. So we need git uh, as make dependency because we are building a, a VCS package. So I'll go ahead and add the git here then we can see it's built just fine then uh, we can check the file locations with the tar-tf again everything looks in place cool then uh, if you want to again if you want to create the src info we can go ahead and do that and like i said i i used uh, the libxcb for the package uh, dependency but it's not actually correct so i'll use a true i'll create a truth environment for building our package in a clean uh, arsenic setup so in dev tools we have in uh, we have some, we need some of the uh, tools in the dev tools package so i'm going to go ahead and install that then i'll create a truth directory and set a environment variable for it because we will need it and I'll use the make arch root script for creating an arch links root at a specified location, which will be our root uh, directory. And I'll uh, install the base devil packages inside it. Then I can use the arch and spawn uh, command for uh, truthing, uh, truthing in the directory and uh, running a command inside it. So I'll go ahead and update my uh, simple arch Linux uh, clean arsenic setup inside our truth directory then we are ready to building our package inside a clean uh, arsenic, arsenic setup so i'm going to go in, uh, go into the package directory and use make truth package tool for uh, with the c and r uh, c flag with and c flag will mean uh, it will clean the truth before building it and r means we are using uh, the truth uh, directory with the environment we environment variable we just set so we go ahead and run this command and everything should be fine but we are seeing that the package didn't didn't build so it is why uh, we uh, we use the libxcb but libxcb can be installed without the x server itself so we need libx11 for the for the package to be built so i'm going to uh, update my package build and add the libx11 in fact libx11 depends on the libxcb so we don't need libxcb at all so i'm going to remove the libxcb from the package build and when we use that same command again it will build just fine and i'll update the vcs package uh, as well and we we are ready to go but there is a regular convenient way uh, instead of the classic truth uh, which is built which is extra x86 64 build it will use the presets uh, from the uh, presets directory and it it's actually uh, it's easier for, for us to use this command because we don't have to deal with the other truth stuff and we can go ahead and do that if we if we are actually this command is used when, for uh, the official packages because it's convenient we don't have to like i said we don't have to deal with the truth itself that was a classic way so that is it for the presentation and demo i try to show you how to create a rust application from scratch and package it for arsenix i wanted to show some points with the uh, the missing fields and the false dependency and uh, I, I think I, I showed how to detect the false dependencies uh, and how to detect other uh, mistakes in the package build so that is it thank you